In recent years, scientists have uncovered a sensational discovery that has left them in awe. A vast secret city beneath the Grand Canyon in the southwestern United States. Initially, the presence of this underground metropolis, which is thought to be thousands of years old, was rejected as a simple conspiracy theory. Recent technological advances in archaeological mapping techniques, however, have unearthed irrefutable proof of its existence. The discovery has sent shockwaves across the scientific world and prompted numerous issues regarding the history of the ancient North American civilizations. In this video, we'll look into the mysterious history of the metropolis buried beneath the Grand Canyon and consider its implications for our understanding of human history on this continent. Subscribe to our channel now and press the bell icon for regular updates. Let's dive into the video. The Grand Canyon became a national park in 1919. There's no doubt that Theodore Roosevelt loved the Grand Canyon. He went back several times to explore and enjoy the area around Lake Powell and the Grand Canyon. In 1908, he made the Grand Canyon a national monument, and in 1919, it became a national park. In the early 1900s, Mr. Kincaid was hired by the Smithsonian Institute as an archaeologist to find the Western states. His journey took him to many places, but one of them may have changed the way we think about the Grand Canyon and government groups that study history. He started his journey at Green River, Utah on the Colorado River through the canyonlands with a friend and a wooden boat. They planned to float down the Colorado River to Yuma, Arizona to find the Grand Canyon. What I read on April 5, 1909 in the Arizona Gazette newspaper was very interesting to me. The Gazette article went on to talk about a forgotten city he found while traveling by the modern Lake Powell Dam. After the ancient city was founded, a well-known newspaper like the Arizona Gazette wrote an article about a large and spectacular underground Egyptian metropolis buried in the Grand Canyon. After that, there were no more stories, follow-ups, or pieces about this. The information had just disappeared. If something doesn't seem right, it probably isn't. He chose to study this topic and spent more than eight years looking into everything he could find out about it. G. E. Kincaid, the explorer who found the great underground citadel of the Grand Canyon while traveling from Green River, Wyoming to Yuma, Colorado in a wooden boat a few months ago, brought the latest news of the progress of the explorations of what scientists now consider to be the oldest archaeological discovery in the U.S. and one of the most valuable in the world to the city yesterday, according to the Gazette. The Smithsonian Institute is currently doing the most thorough research, which will continue until the final report is finished. Professor S.A. Jordan is in charge of linking the chain. The long main tube has been explored down almost a mile or 1,480 feet below the surface to a large room from which dozens of passages branch off like spokes of a wheel. Several hundred chambers have been found that can be reached by passages that branch off the main route. One of these passages has been explored for 854 feet, and another has been looked into for 634 feet. Scientists are so interested that they're making plans to set up the camp for the long-term research and to add 30 or 40 more people to the force. Mr. Kincaid was the first white child born in Idaho. He'd spent his whole life as an explorer and hunter, and for the last 30 years, he'd worked for the Smithsonian Institute. When his story is told simply, it sounds amazing and even horrifying. First, I'd like to point out that the cavern is almost impossible to get to. The entrance is 1,486 feet below the canyon wall, and it is on government property, so no one is allowed to go there. The story of how he found the cavern has already been told, but in a paragraph, he was alone in the Colorado River in a boat looking for minerals. He saw stains in the sedimentary structure about 2,000 feet above the riverbed, 42 miles up the river from El Tover Crystal Canyon. There was no track up to this point, but he made it with a lot of hard work. The cave's entrance was there. The main hallway is about 12 feet wide and gets narrower to about 9 feet at the far end. About 57 feet from the entrance, two paths branch off to the right and left. Along these paths are several rooms about the size of modern living rooms, but some are 30 by 40 feet square. These rooms have oval-shaped doors and circular air gaps in the walls that let air out into the paths. The walls are about three foot six inches thick and the channels are as straight as an engineer could design them to be. Many of the room's ceilings meet in the middle. The side tunnels at the entrance run at a sharp angle from the main hall, but towards the back, they gradually turn to the right. 
over a hundred feet from the entrance is the cross hall, which is several hundred feet long. This is where the image of the people's deity is located. It is seated cross-legged with a lotus flower or lily in each hand. The face is oriental, as is the carving of this grotto two huge cacti with long arms stand on either side of the dais, which is where the god sits. All of this is made of marble-like hard rock and copper. Different tools were found in the opposite corner of this cross hall. This shows that these people knew how to harden this metal, which chemists have been trying to do for decades without success. On a bench that ran around the workroom, there was charcoal and other material that was probably used in the process. There was also slag and mat-like material that shows that ores were melted, but there is no evidence of whetstones. Ceramics and glazed vases were some of the pottery pieces. One very large stone house hasn't been looked into yet because it's 12 feet high and can only be reached from above. Two copper hooks sticking out of the edge show that a ladder was attached to it. He thinks that the materials used to build these granaries, which are round, are especially strong cement. In this cave, scientists also found a grey metal that they don't know what it is, but it looks like platinum. Cat's eyes, a low-value golden stone, are strewn all over the floor. Each one is carved with the head of a mealy type. The hieroglyphics are on all the urns, walls above gateways, and tablets of stone that were unearthed by the image are the cryptic hieroglyphs that the Smithsonian Institute hopes to figure out. The carving on the tablets is probably related to the religion of the people in southern Arizona. Identical hieroglyphs have been found. Only two animals can be seen in the visual texts. One of them is from prehistoric times, and the other is a mummy. The room where the mummies were found is one of the largest, and the walls slope back at an angle of about 35 degrees. There are different levels of mummies on them, and each one has its carved face. In the middle of each shelf is a small seat with copper cups and pieces of broken swords. Some of the mummies are covered in clay, while others are wrapped in bark and cloth. The urns or cups on the lower levels are simple, while the urns on the top shelves are more complex, indicating a later period of civilization. It is important to note that all of the mummies studied so far have been men, with no children or women buried here. This leads to the assumption that the outside part was the warrior's barracks. One theory says that the caves could have easily fit up to 50,000 people. The current Indian tribes in Arizona are descended from these people. Professor Jordan is thrilled about the find and thinks it will be of great importance to the study of archaeology. An Indian legend. It is interesting to note that the Hopi Indians have a myth that says their ancestors used to live in an underworld in the Grand Canyon until there was a fight between the good and the bad and the people of one heart and the people of two hearts. After that, they moved to the Grand Canyon. Even after eight years of research, we still don't know. After eight years of investigation, the mystery of the Grand Canyon has been solved. I've found a lot of resources and information, but is it enough? That depends on the beholder's point of view. He thinks he has the area narrowed down to a two mile radius, and he thinks that may be the right spot. This place is many miles downstream of the Lake Powell Dam on the Colorado River. It matches the description in the Arizona Gazette, and he thinks he knows where it is because the Navajo Indians hold the East Canyon walls. That's all for this video. Let us know what you think in the comments section, and don't forget to like and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching.